What's the word, y'all? Kings fans, you can dance in the street because uh, Luke Walton is no longer the head coach of your organization. It finally happened. Now, I've said this before, but I want to say this for the new people that are maybe just finding the channel. I get no pleasure in rooting for someone to lose their job. Luke Walton is a person. He has a family. But I think we can all agree that he is probably more equipped to be a, an assistant coach rather than the head coach. I don't know what took the Kings so long to realize that, but hey, better late than never. And the timing of this. All the timing of this is, is very suspicious. I got this notification at 11.59, one minute before football kicked off. Hmm. They want you to be watching your favorite football team, get this notification, be like, whatever, uh, the Bears are on. Nah, on this channel, we don't give a damn about football. We only care about Luke Walton getting fired. And, and it's Sunday. I normally don't upload at this time, but we got to, man. As, <laughs> as somebody that's been on, like, the top of fire Luke Walton Mountain, I have to talk about... The, the fact that they finally did it. And honestly, we knew it was either going to happen today or tomorrow. Last week, they put out a, a report that said they won't be giving him the same leeway that they have over previous seasons. And then they went out there and lost back-to-back -back games, one of them being against the Toronto Raptors. And the final score, I don't really say this, but it was an embarrassing loss if you watched that one. And then last night, they went against the Utah Jazz, and they lost again. And, and during that game, a fan puked, sitting courtside. And <laughs> what might have been the last straw... Um, for a lot of Kings fans, even though they had already been mentioning, hey, we want Luke Walton gone, is they had a 20-minute timeout because a dude literally puked on the court. So they had to get somebody in to clean it up. And if you looked over on Quinn Snyder in the Utah Jazz, Quinn Snyder was coaching his boys during that 20-minute timeout. Luke Walton, what was he doing? Bro was sitting like this the whole time. You 20-minute timeout, you don't give one little crumb of knowledge, one little thing of coaching? And they lost that one, and uh, Luke Walton lost his job. Uh, I saw people on the Kings subreddit calling him Puke Walton a couple hours ago. The last game of Luke Walton as a head coach of the Kings, someone literally threw up <laughs> on the court. I, it's crazy. But listen, we have been calling for this to happen for a few years now. Um, the ownership of the Sacramento Kings, they don't get away with, like, firing Luke Walton does not answer every problem for the Kings. It's not like, oh, automatically everything is about to be great, skipping, skipping the practice. No. Ownership, general managing has been terrible for over a decade now. And one of the reasons it took them so long to fire Luke Walton is because they're, they, they don't want to end up paying another head coach. Listen, we got three more years of Luke Walton's contract. We don't want to pay him and then also hire someone else. And now we're paying like five coaches because they keep firing people. They've had the most like turnaround in coaching I've ever seen. And the crazy thing is, even though Luke Walton has been terrible, he's been the second most winningest coach in franchise history. That lets me know that whoever is doing the hirings around here needs to be gone because they can't figure out their guy. Luke Walton, if you do not remember, coached one of the worst defensive teams in the history of basketball last year. We're in year 75 of this, this, this thing we call the NBA. Luke Walton coached one of the worst defensive teams in the history of basketball. And the ownership, the general manager is like, you know, we're we going to give him just a little bit more time. Are you kidding me? The offseason is the perfect time to get a new coach because there are so many people looking for jobs. You have ample amount of time to interview people. But now that you fired him a month into the season, you have to pick somebody off of your, your coaching staff right now. And it looked like it might be Alvin Gentry. It could be Doug Christie. They're still trying to figure it out. But, but you had an entire offseason where you could have done this. But instead, you waited to figure out something that every fan in the world knew. Every Kings fan, every NBA fan who's watched the Kings knew that Luke Walton was not the guy. But we have seen times, right, where, where a team fires their head coach in the season and then they turn up. The Atlanta Hawks did it last year. You know, they were whatever and whatever. They were a lot below 500. They fired Lloyd Pierce and now Nate McMillan comes in and the team rallies and boom, they made the playoffs slash makes the conference finals. It can happen, but it probably won't. And, and... Like, they're, they're so deep into this, y'all. Let me let me take a step back. De'Aaron Fox was a player that wanted to get drafted to the Sacramento Kings. That does not happen often. I have talked to people in the NBA world that will tell you that they didn't give their medical records, they didn't interview, they didn't work out with the Kings because they didn't want to get drafted there. It didn't matter if the Kings had a top five pick, it didn't matter if they had the 20th pick, People did not want to play for the Kings because of the organization. De'Aaron Fox took that challenge with open arms. Tyrese took that challenge with open arms. 
He wanted to go to Sacramento. He wanted to be part of the change in the organization. I haven't talked to Davion Mitchell about it, but it seems like he, he might have wanted to go to Sacramento. And what I saw a couple nights ago, De'Aaron Fox went to a post-game interview, and that man is broken. And again, I'm not saying it's completely the King's fault that he's broken because he is struggling on the court as well. But this is a dude that you couldn't go into an interview that he wasn't smiling. This is a dude that would dunk or do a fancy layup and, and celebrate on the way back. You're not getting that De'Aaron Fox anymore. And hopefully, a coach of change can help that out a bit. But I don't know if that's the only thing that needs to be done. And I feel for Kings fans, and we, we've talked about this before, but I feel for them because it has been so long since they've had a competent team or enjoyable team. Luke Walden in his last post-game interview said something that, um, again, I follow a bunch of Kings fans and because, again, De'Aaron Fox is one of my favorite players. Um, Tyrese is the homie. Davion is the homie. So I'm trying to keep up with, with what's going on within the organization, even if I'm not watching every game. And I saw a clip on Twitter of, of Coach um, Luke Walton last night after their loss to Utah, and he mentioned how the team is still trying to learn the nuances of basketball. And that rubbed me and a lot of Kings fans the wrong way because it's not like y'all got this ultra young team. Y'all aren't the OKC Thunder and the Houston Rockets. Y'all team is just slightly percentage points lower than the league average when it comes to age. You have HB, Rashawn Holmes, Buddy Heald, Mo Harkless. These are not young players. Tristan Thompson playing big minutes. These are not young players that are starting to learn the nuances of basketball. That's not what this is about. This is about you having a terrible offensive system. This is about you having the worst defense of all time last year and still a really bad defense this year. So far, the 26 in defense. They give up the second most um, points in the paint, second most second chance points in the entire league. De'Aaron Fox said in his postgame interview, listen, we okay with Luke because he's not the one that's giving up the offensive rebounds. He's not the one letting people walk to the rim, but he is the one that is allowing it to happen in the sense that he's not making his players better. He's not putting them in a position to be better. Alvin Gentry has had some up and down times in, as an NBA head coach. We don't know what Doug Christie can bring. But I'm excited to potentially see Doug Christie as a coach. I like Doug Christie a lot. But this team needs more, and I mean a lot more than a coaching change. This team needs a, a directional change, whether it be on the roster, on ownership, or in the, the, the general ma with the general manager. Marvin Bagley last week got asked to get subbed into a game, and he was like, I'm good. What? What? Are you kidding me? I promise if the Kings were in a higher market, they would be one of the laughing stocks of the NBA. But since they're in Sacramento and we're all accustomed to them being being at the bottom of the barrel, nobody cares. And that's disrespectful to the to the one of the most loyal fan bases in the entire league. One of the most loyal fan bases in the entire league aren't even going to see the Kings play right now. That's crazy. One of my biggest memories growing up is watching the Kings fans pack out the house when they were going against the Lakers in the conference finals. When it was Jason Williams and, and, and Chris Webber, you don't get that atmosphere anymore because they're they're depleted. Their morale is depleted because it's been a decade. Y'all have had 30 head coaches since, since Chris Webber was leading the team. There needs to be some type of consistency in this organization, and they haven't been able to do that. 10 head coaches in 15 years. 10 head coaches in 15 years. So the very last thing before we get out of here, right? In 2018, 2019, Dave Yeager was still the coach. Get well soon, Dave Yeager. Um, and the Kings were the ninth seed, which, you know what I'm saying? In 2021, being the ninth seed means you're in the postseason, not the playoffs, but the postseason, right? Um, they had the fifth highest pace in the entire NBA. Makes sense. You have a guy named De'Aaron Fox who's nicknamed the Swiper. He's one of the fastest, if not the fastest, in the entire league. Then um, Dave Yeager and whatever, they part ways. And then Luke Walton comes in. And that fifth, what was it, fifth? Fifth ranked pace team, fifth, drops all the way to 20th. And they lose way more games. So let me know in the comment section what you're thinking, man. Luke Walton fired. What's next for the Sacramento Kings? Kings fans, how you feeling? I'll be down there reading everything.